For more than 50 years, landing people on the moon again was treated as something close to impossible. The problem was not bravery or will, but the harsh laws of fuel, mass, and physics. Getting down from lunar orbit takes a lot of energy, and landing without blasting the surface apart is even harder. Experts said the math did not close because the vehicles needed to be too heavy. Then SpaceX made it work by rethinking the entire way we get to space. This is the story of how Starship HLS turned a problem Problem everyone avoided into something that can actually be done. To understand why this was seen as impossible, you have to start with where the spacecraft comes from. Modern lunar missions do not circle the moon the way Apollo did. They use a strange looping path called Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit, or NRHO. You can think of this as a long, stretched loop that swings far from the moon and then comes close again. This orbit is stable and good for long missions, but it is a terrible place to start a landing. You are high up and moving very fast. You need a lot of fuel to slow down. Apollo did not deal with this because Apollo used a low orbit close to the surface, which costs less fuel to land from. NASA chose NRHO for the Artemis missions because it works better with modern modern navigation and long missions, but it made the landing part much harder for engineers. The next problem is mass, which is just a science word for how much something weighs. Apollo's lunar lander weighed about 15 tons when it landed. That is about the same as 10 average cars. Starship is much bigger. It is 50 meters tall, which is the same as a 15-story building. When Starship lands on the moon, it will weigh over 100 tons. That is about as heavy as 15 fully loaded pickup trucks. Getting that much weight down to the surface and back up again was thought to be impossible. If you use a normal rocket, you have to carry all the fuel for the landing and the trip home from the moment you leave Earth. By the time you get to the moon, your rocket is mostly just empty tanks and very little fuel. Engineers at big aerospace companies looked at these numbers and said it could not be done. They thought any lander big enough to carry people and supplies would be too heavy to fly. This created a wall that blocked progress for decades. While SpaceX worked on new ideas, NASA continued to use old methods that cost a lot of money. One launch of the SLS rocket costs $4.1 billion. That is $4,100 million. To give you an idea of how much money that is, you could buy every single person in a large city like Houston a brand new car for that amount of money. Because the rocket costs so much, they can only fly it once every few years. This slow pace makes it hard to learn from mistakes. Boeing also struggled with these challenges. Their Starliner ship had many software problems and failed its first big test in 2019. It ended up costing more than $5 billion just to develop. These high costs and slow timelines made the moon feel further away than ever. The experts believed that the only way to get back to the moon was to build small, light ships that could barely carry two people. They thought the dream of a moon base was just science fiction because the physics of fuel simply would not allow for anything bigger. Here is how they actually did it. SpaceX decided to stop trying to carry all the fuel from Earth in one go. Instead, they decided to launch the lander empty and then fill it up while it is already in space. This is called orbital refueling. It is the key innovation that changed everything. By sending up tanker ships to meet Starship in Earth orbit, SpaceX can fill the tanks completely before the ship ever leaves for the moon. This means when Starship starts its trip, it has a full tank of gas just like it did on the launch pad. This simple change in strategy means the ship can be huge and carry 100 tons of cargo. It turns the moon from a place we just visit into a place where we can actually build things. This breakthrough happened because SpaceX focused on making their rockets move like airplanes. They built the Raptor engine to make this possible. Raptor engines are special because they can change their power smoothly, kind of like how you can press the gas pedal in your car a little or a lot. They can go from 40% power to 100% power. This matters because when you are trying to land a giant ship on the moon, you need to be able to adjust the power Power very precisely to keep it balanced. It is like trying to balance on one foot. You need to make small adjustments to stay upright. Most older rocket engines are like an on-off switch. They are either at full blast or they are off. 
SpaceX engines give the pilot or the computer the control they need to land a 15-story building on the moon. The Raptor engine also uses a special mix of fuel called liquid oxygen and methane. This is important because methane is easier to keep cold in space than the hydrogen used by the SLS rocket. It also means that one day, we might be able to make fuel on the moon or Mars using the soil and the air. This is a big part of the strategic intelligence behind the Starship design. They aren't just building a rocket for today, they are building a system that can grow. The decision to use stainless steel for the ship's body was another major victory for technical mastery. Most rockets use very expensive carbon fiber or light aluminum. Steel is cheap and easy to work with. More importantly, steel can handle heat very well. When a ship comes back through the atmosphere, it gets very hot. Steel stays strong even when it is glowing red. This allows the ship to be used over and over again. Reusing the ship is the only way to make the cost of going to space low enough for regular people. SpaceX has already proven they can do this with their smaller Falcon 9 rocket. They have landed that rocket over 200 times. While other companies are still throwing their expensive engines into the ocean after one use, space SpaceX is washing theirs and flying them again a few weeks later. This has allowed SpaceX to take over the market. They now fly about 140 times per year. That is more than twice a week, every single week. No other company or country comes close to that speed. The competitive scoreboard shows that SpaceX is launching more stuff into space than the rest of the world combined. This is a huge shift in the competence hierarchy of the space industry. For a long time, people thought only big governments could do things in space. Now, a private company is leading the way. The justice consequences of this shift are clear. The old way of doing business involved spending billions of your tax dollars on rockets that were meant to be thrown away. That system rewarded being being slow and expensive, the new system rewards being fast and efficient. When SpaceX won the contract to build the Moon Lander, they did it for a fixed price of $2.9 billion. That sounds like a lot, but it is much less than what Boeing or other old companies ask for. It is also less than what NASA spends on just one SLS flight. This means we are getting a permanent Moon Lander for less than the cost of a single one-way trip on the old rocket. This is a better use of resources for everyone. The timeline for the moon is also getting more urgent. The delay in the old systems pushed the next human moon landing from 2026 to 2027. China says they are going to land people on the moon by 2030. Originally, the United States was going to beat them by four years. Now that gap is only three years. If there are more delays with the old rockets, that gap could disappear. This is why the speed of Starship is so important. Space SpaceX can build and test new ships in weeks, not years. They are using a method where they build a ship, fly it until it breaks, find the problem, and then fix it on the next one. This is how they solved the problem of the heat shield. The heat shield is a layer of tiles that protects the ship from burning up. It works kind of like how a candle burns away slowly to keep the flame from touching the table. By testing these tiles in real flights, SpaceX learned how to make them stronger and lighter. This pattern recognition allowed them to move faster than anyone thought possible. One of the most important parts of the Starship HLS design is how it lands. The moon has a lot of dust. If you fire a big engine close to the ground, you can kick up rocks and dust that could damage the ship or anything nearby. To solve this, SpaceX added smaller landing engines higher up on the body of the ship. These engines fire to slow the ship down without hitting the ground directly with a massive blast of fire. This is the kind of technical detail that shows why this system is ready for real work. It is not just about getting there, it is about being able to land safely at a base where people are living and working. Once the landing is finished, the ship stays on the moon to act as a home for the astronauts. Because Starship is so big, it has more living space than a large house. The astronauts will have plenty of room to sleep, eat, and do science experiments. This is a huge change from the Apollo days when three men were cramped into a space the size of a small car. Having this much room makes long missions possible. This is how a landing spot turns into a construction site and then into a permanent base. 
The resource protection part of this mission is also vital. The moon has water ice in deep craters that never see the sun. We can use that ice to make air for people to breathe and water for them to drink. We can even turn it into more fuel. Starship is the only ship big enough to carry the heavy mining equipment needed to get that water out of the ground. By using the moon's own resources, we can stop being dependent on Earth for every single thing. This makes the mission safer and cheaper over time. It is the same way early explorers on Earth learned to live off the land instead of carrying all their food with them. The strategic intelligence of the Starship program is focused on this long-term goal. They aren't just trying to put flags and footprints on the moon, they are trying to build a bridge between worlds. Every time a Starship launches, it provides more data for the next one. This information hunt is what drives the engineering team. They look at every vibration and every temperature change to make the ship better. This is why SpaceX is so much more successful successful than their competitors. They are not afraid to fail during a test if it means they learn something new. Boeing and NASA often spend years trying to make sure a rocket is perfect before it ever flies. This sounds good, but it means they don't find the real problems until it is too late. SpaceX finds the problems early when they are still easy to fix. This is why the Starship HLS is already being built and tested while other landers are still just drawings on a computer screen. The world of spaceflight is changing because the barriers of cost and weight have been broken. What used to take a whole nation's budget can now now be done by a focused team of engineers using smart design. The idea of a moon base was once considered a dream for the far future. Now it is a schedule. With Starship HLS, the hardware is already flying and the engines are already burning. The math that didn't close for 50 years has finally been solved through iteration and scale. SpaceX didn't just aim for the moon, they built the machine that makes going there unavoidable. The next decade will show what happens when heavy cargo and refueling stop being dreams and start being tools for building a new home among the stars. SpaceX didn't just land a rocket, they made it routine. Over 200 successful landings have occurred while other projects struggle with basic software and high costs. The impossible became infrastructure that we can now use to reach the next frontier. Now Starship is ready to do the same thing at 10 times the scale, turning the Moon and Mars from science fiction into an engineering project that we can actually finish.